Welcome back. Here we are <laughs> to another van build video. Sorry if you were perusing and thought this was a cat video or how to cook lasagna with Martha Stewart. I don't know. First thing that came to my head. All right, solar. If you're used to paying for energy, like most of the world is, when you start using solar for the first time, it just feels like you're cheating the system. I mean, I'm charging my laptop with the sun. Just let that sink in. The gigantic ball of gas in the sky is powering our Nutribullet. Brilliant, I love it. I'm in love with it. Before going any farther, just know that I am not a master. I learned probably like you are, but I will say our system is working and I hope I can give you any tricks or tips that work for us. What did we use? Solar panels. <laughs> You're probably looking for a little more detail than that. We use not one or two, but three 100 watt, 12 volt monocrystalline solar panels. So as you can see, I'm hooking up our solar panels on our super strut that I go over in our racks and rims video. And yes, they are upside down right now. I got this. That's so I can link them all together. And you can link up solar panels in two main ways, through series or parallel. I'll just let you glance at these two real quick. These are the difference between series and parallel. When wiring solars in parallel, the amperage is additive, but the voltage remains the same. When wiring solar panels in a series, the voltage is additive, but the amperage remains the same. We wired up ours in series. So yes, that means negative to positive, positive to negative. Again, I encourage you to do a little more research on this topic, but this is just what worked for us. Seems simple, but you don't want those cords flopping around underneath your solar panels when they're on the top of the van. So I used Gorilla Tape and zip ties just to make sure they were all tight and secure underneath the solar panels, which right you right there huge advocate of gorilla tape this stuff i can respect this stuff so as i wrapped up linking up our solar panels this is what it looked like towards the end so after you've wired it all up that's right it's time to actually bring the solar panels to the roof of your van because yes that's where they belong after securing the solar panels to the roof you guessed it time for another hole in the van i know nothing you look forward to you're going to want to use a hole saw and if you haven't purchased some of these go ahead because you're gonna be using them a lot on the van. Make sure you get rid of those metal shavings and then and then protect the bare metal with some Rust-Oleum paint to keep from rusting. I used a little more, you guessed it, Gorilla Tape around the metal edges to make sure the wires were protected. So if you haven't put two and two together, the hole we just created was for solar panel extension cable wires. You'll also need to buy one of these caps that the extension cables run through. Attach those cables, run it through the cap, which took me forever. Watch this. Like, what are you doing, dude? Put them through the hole. I finally figure it out. And then obviously to secure it from leaks and dripping and water, you're gonna wanna make sure to give it a good bead of silicone or lap seal all around it. All right, your solar panels are up. They are connected in series. You're good to go as far as 300 watts of solar on your roof. Well done. What would I do differently? Knowing what I know, I would have, this is silly and very cosmetic, but my racks are black. And as you can see in this picture, the rims around the solar panels are just an aluminum color. One, it would look better if it was black on black. Two, it would help us be more stealth. That's something I would change. Something I would keep the same, 300 watts is perfect for us right now, but what I made sure to do is keep enough room for a whole nother set of panels right above the ones we currently have. So simply creating a grid for yourself to add more easily. All right guys, we did it. Solar panels are done. Shore power. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. What you need to know about shore power. It can be one of the ways to produce energy for your batteries. But this video really is more about how to install the plug for your shore power. Maybe you don't need it, but I figure any help is good help. Is that a quote? Doesn't sound very good. Probably not a quote. It's my quote. We used a 15 amp, 125 volt AC port, which may I say, pairs perfectly with the Noco Genius 10 amp battery charger. And more on that battery charger later. So first what you need to do is find a good place for this port to go. Generally closer to where your electric is housed is gonna be the best bet. So drill your hole and again, we're using hole saws. After you drill your hole, file it down, tap it with rust oil, you know the deal. You then need to make some pilot holes for the actual screws that attach it to the van. Here's a little shout out to one of my favorite tools. It's kind of a forgotten tool, the scratch all. I use this a lot of times when I need to make a precise drilling, but not totally necessary. Drill some pilot holes, secure the port. The instructions didn't call for any silicone. It has a rubber gasket that does the job. Here it is finished and voila. Knowing what I know, one thing I would change, there's really nothing to change here. Pretty simple, and this seems silly, but keeping the same, I love these NOCO products. Like I said, it paired really well with our battery charger. Alrighty, there is all I know on solar and shore power. 
Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, there's links and subscribe buttons that I'm sure you can click to help us out. You know how it works. You're smart. So until next time, later.